Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, a uh, holistic integrative psychiatric facility where we treat people, we do not treat diagnoses. My name is Jim Ellermeyer, I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my right would be Nick, a psychiatric nurse practitioner student. And on my left? My name is Sophia Siglov. I'm a physician assistant student at Chatham University. And as always, we try to bring a topic to your attention, to your awareness, that perhaps you could examine and push out into the outside world, Nick. And because, well, we often say everyone is in recovery from something. Are they not, Sophia? Sure. Absolutely. Yes. So does the recovery work take place here, Mr. Nick? It takes place all the time. Jim. It takes place all the time, sure. Yes. We we guide people on the recovery work, okay? And the recovery work takes place out there. Out there. Where's there? Your everyday life. Right, right, right. And today where sometimes there is a comfort zone, is it not? Yes. What would you describe as a comfort zone, Mr. Nick? I would describe a comfort zone as a place of comfortability in your own skin and environment. To be comfortable in your own skin and your own environment. How about uh, you, Sophie? Would you describe that for me, please? I think a comfort zone to me would be somewhere where you don't have fear. It's something sure. that you're not unaware of. And in, and in our society, hasn't comfort become a value on a life goal? Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. So, however, however, have you ever heard people that are stuck in their lives? Stuck? Yes. Have you, ever, have you ever been stuck in your life? Yeah. Absolutely, for sure. And sometimes that comfort zone is not so comfortable, is it? Not Nick. If you, if someone else would look and say, why do you, why do you keep there? Why do you keep doing that? Why do, you, why, why these, all these behaviors? Why these thoughts? It, just because it's that can be their comfort zone, it may mm -hmm. not be beneficial in their lives. Mm -hmm. Yes. However, however, it is what they know. So what we want to do is try to help people obtain a place, a comfort zone where it's an excellent place to return to, to recharge your batteries, to be safe, to be safe and comfortable and warm and loved. Uh, not necessarily a place to stay. Not necessarily a place to stay, Nick. So the idea is, is that what sometimes when we create our when we create our comfort zones, we create them like a box. Do we not? And we're the ones with these this our comfort zone is self-constructed. It's self-constructed. Think of it. Think of think of your comfort zone in your life you self-constructed. Okay. No matter no matter what that may be. However, at times, what happens is that our comfort zone can reduce our motivation. If you were nice and warm and comfortable, would you be would you be a comfortable place? Would you be in your position where you're at? Would you be in the schooling where you are? Never. Never. Is tell me, Nick, is uh, is your profession is what you're uh, training to be now? Is that a comfort zone place? It's a very scary place. Very scary place. Yes. So, however, sometimes what that scary place does can provide motivation. Can it not? Yes, it Absolutely. can. Absolutely. So if you'd have stayed inside a, a comfort zone, would you be doing what you're doing now? I would not be in this position right now, Jim. No, you wouldn't be. And you, Miss Sophia? I would have never made it here. If you stayed in your comfort zone, absolutely not. So, and this, and again, this isn't a matter that just jumped out of the woods today or fell out of the sky, okay? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, in 1908, there were two gentlemen by the name of York Seas and Dodson. And what they did, they created a graph of what was called optimal anxiety. Optimal anxiety. So when you, when you talk to somebody and say, oh, I'm anxious, you say, oh, great. What can we do with that? Normally, when somebody comes in to see you, Nick, in the hospital and says, oh, I'm anxious, normally what, what the doctor says, oh, my God, let's medicate them. Something, yeah. <laughs> so the idea is, how can, how can we reach that point of optimal anxiety where, where we have room to expand? Takes time and development. Takes time and development, sure. So imagine this test next uh, test this next presentation you have, both of you or anything anyone out there that has something going on in their life. If you aren't just a little bit desperate, if you don't have a little bit of anxiety, uh, reach that optimal anxiety level where you can actually get forward and move. It's one of the most wonderful things to to break out of break out of procrastination when we break out of procrastination. Okay, and actually, does the magic happen in your life? inside that comfort zone, Nick, or does it happen outside? It happens outside. You have to expand your horizons. Absolutely. In your life, in your comfort zone, is, this, is that where the magic is? No, nope. really? it's all about taking chances. Sure, and, in, and just in, since this is a psychiatric facility and Counseling 101, if we look at, uh, if we look at 
counseling as a four pane window okay and two gentlemen actually in the past brought this up their name was uh, it was called a Jahari window and it's not nothing exotic it was thought of by two guys named Joe and Harry okay so in in the first pane we're looking at places where let's say the therapist uh, knows something and the, the client the patient does not in the second frame we're looking at a place where uh, the therapist knows something and the patient does not maybe through observation we move down to the third pane where both the therapist and, and the patient client knows exactly what's going on if there's a place where there's magic Nick it's in that fourth it's in that bottom bottom pane okay. it's where it's where that the therapist has no idea what to expect and neither does the, neither does the client or the patient that's the unknown and that's where the magic is that's where the magic involved so so you try to imagine yourself and everyone out there try to imagine themselves as a balloon with an infinite capacity to expand and you truly are you truly are you're a bright pure spirited human uh, being of the creator and have an infinite, infinite possibility to expand so I'd like you to and let's imagine these two boxes are your comfort zones Okay. okay. These are your comfort zones. So I want you to blow. I want you to blow the balloon up, but I want you to blow it up inside the box. Put it inside the box and blow it up. Okay. Go ahead. Oh. There it goes. Mm. It happened. Nick, you're gonna have to stop smoking those cheap stogies. Yeah. And, uh, so the idea is, can your can your balloon expand anymore? It's stuck. It's stuck. Yes. Can your balloon expand anymore? It's limited. And where where is it at? This is your comfort zone, is it not? Yes. Wouldn't a comfort zone be a place where you could expand your horizons, move out in, in unknown areas, have adventures in your life? Is it? No. Not in this box. Not not in, no. and that and that is your comfort zone. Exactly. Okay. And naturally, during our, the course of our lives, our comfort zones expand and contracts according to how we self-construct them. However, where in this particular type of instance, the, the, the balloon wants to expand, does it not? Absolutely. And that's and that's and that's and it cannot can it because yeah. because you've created. So what we try to do, people, is help is help people understand what what is what they're comfort zone is constructed out of what these signs top shape bottoms are constructed out of and we try to look at them because some of them are obviously purposeful in their life however we have to look back and say this is what's stop is stopping me from moving forward this is what's stopping me from expanding so remember so bring your balloons out bring your balloons out and blow them up blow them up <laughs> so would, the, would these balloons fit in here? Not Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So my my challenge is to everyone out there is to examine their examine their comfort zone and see whether it fits you or not. See what see whether it fits you or not. Yes. And really, a higher grade cigar might serve you well. Uh, so any uh, any final thoughts on a comfort zone? I think. The only way you can really get out of your comfort zone is by taking chances, and anything that you might fear will bring you anxiety, but it's worth taking the chance. It's just natural to yes. have anxiety. I agree with you completely, Sophia. Expand on your boundaries. Take chances in life. Maybe a high-risk, high-reward. It would serve you well in life. Absolutely. So would, uh, would your comfort zone be having a uh, red uh, foam thing on your nose, Nick? Well, exactly, but it's worth a shot, Jim. A step outside your comfort zone, Nick. There we go. Looks good. Taking a chance. Taking good. a chance on Stepping life. Out, step outside that yeah. box, Nick. Step outside the comfort zone. And as always, uh, if someone could perhaps lead us off to so know how we can, uh, we offer, we appreciate any comments, questions, concerns, criticisms. All are welcome, welcome and all will be answered. To continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter under Seclara Life. You can also find this and other Grand Rounds on YouTube.com slash Video and find audio versions on YouTube, Stitcher, Sprecher, and iHeartRadio. And please visit us at www.seclare.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. 
And as always, a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we urge people to fish without bait. So where, where we're living life without definitive expectations, where we're living life a bit outside the box. So until then, wear that, wear that red nose out proudly wherever you go, Mr. Nick. Well until done. then, thank you so much, and be good to another. Today.